let's start with the last exercise. So um, today we talk about the DDPG and uh, later on on the PPO and I guess both is quite interesting because um, both solution can handle with continuous action and state space which is also necessary for the upcoming exam task which you have to solve and yeah let's introduce a bit the task we want to solve with the two different algorithms today so um, we will look at such a rocket launch so the um, interesting part is here that when we launch the rocket uh, we will have yeah, some limited amount of fuel and uh, during the rise of the rocket we will um, yeah lose that weight uh, we needed to accelerate the rocket but also with the rising height we will also um, have another uh, gravity so um, so um, where was okay rocket launch the uh, weights and the gravity is changing so um, yeah that's it it's um, here in the top is also linked the uh, repository where we have um, they have copied the environment so there's nothing changed by us and yeah with that, um, we will go now through the two parts. So first part will be the DDPG and we will um, implement it by, uh, by hand. So we write all the code by our own and then we will also have a look a bit on yeah, reinforcement learning libraries, how we can use it. But uh, keep in mind during the exam task, it's not allowed to directly use such um, implementation from libraries like stable baselines or um, yeah, Ray or different other providers. Okay, so the deep deterministic policy gradient was part of the lecture last week when I'm correct. So we have two different parts to respect the critic and also the actor. Maybe to compare it to the actor critic method, um, which was part of exercise number 11. Um, there, um, we estimated in the critic only the um, state value and here in the critic from the DDPG, it is uh, the state action value. So um, the chosen action from the actor is also part of the critic network. Uh, so as a small hint at that point. Okay, so what we have already provided in these tasks is that we have here the um, networks and some plot function, some test function. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the actor network, the critic network, and really important here is also that we provided some kind of buffer. Um, important here is that it's some kind of ring buffer where all the experience are inside and um, the interesting part is here the fetch function where we randomly draw um, yeah, 32 experience which are hopefully not correlated to each other so that they are not directly following in the um, in the different time steps during the experiment okay and yeah with that I guess we are somehow in the part which uh, has to be solved by you. So we have here the actor and critic network, the replay buffer, and what I didn't have mentioned until now is that we are also have here the target network uh, for actor and critic. 
with a deep copy and um, yeah because somehow we when we didn't have this actor and critic network we um, yeah try in the loss function or in the update function to compare the right hand side and left hand side directly with each, uh, with each other this helps to um, get the training stable and yeah more and le or more or less these uh, the usage of target networks is like a low pass filter that the up um, that the update of the weights is not too fast and as i mentioned it's mainly to stabilize the um, training of the agent okay then in the top we had it already the um, yeah loss function for the critic here it's like in the previous times that we minimize our uh, loss function and yeah like usually we get the gradient and may, um, yeah, update in that manner our um, yeah, network weights or estimate here the loss and here we continue with the actor loss it's um, Sometimes it's also called pi loss in the uh, last lecture run because it's the policy pi somehow. And um, here is the important part that we need the um, minus in front of the loss because we want to maximize it. And the um, gradient descent functions are usually implemented in that way that the minimize something and with the minus uh, we can uh, maximize then our uh, the learning part here okay so i mixed a bit here so um, here is now the estimation of the uh, loss the um, we get here the gradients and with the update we can now update the gradient here it's maybe some interesting part that we can save compute, computational effort a bit that we um, turn off the gradient update of the critic because we already did that and only update here the actor part without the critic part and afterwards we turn the update again. Yeah. And um, then we have here in this part also the update um, of the target networks, which I, I already, already mentioned as a yeah, low pass filtering. And um, yeah, sometimes it's uh, also the, uh, mentioned as polyac averaging, but it's uh, yeah, only a low pass filtering behavior of the network update that it's just slower updating um, in comparison to the actual networks. Then um, as the name set of the DDPG, we have a deterministic action directly in the actor. So we, when we go through the forward path, of the actor, which is our policy. So we didn't need the critic itself in the execution of the policy. We directly get the action. And as the name said, it's directly a deterministic action. And to explore the area around this action, we have to add some Gaussian noise here to yeah, explore other parts and optimize our policy, our agent in that case. Yeah, that's here the part to the implementation. Are there any questions to that until now? Yeah, it's um, like epsilon greedy. So you define some kind of epsilon, how um, how much yeah, random actions you want to choose. 
and then it's like in the former behavior that you um yeah i would say like 30 percent in the beginning or something like that it's normally it's just a, a kind of hyperparameter you optimize during a hyperparameter optimization and yeah look then into it what epsilon is nice to have to explore accordingly or in a good fashion to solve your task behavior uh, you mean instead of epsilon greedy so um i'm not sure i mean you usually use always a bit the greedy actions but the 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 um the exploring action i guess you can do also something else instead of epsilon greedy i mean there are also um we did also uh, some master thesis and that kind that we use for the exploration some kind of model predictive controller to explore safe actions uh, to find an optimal policy so um yeah i mean it's it's an off policy algorithm so you need the state transitions but if it's really based on the policy itself it should work in my opinion Okay, so that's uh, the part to the um, implementation. For the execution, we um, will execute the code four times. So for we um, have a training duration of uh, 20,000 steps of four agents so that we have also somehow a bit an observation of the random initialization of our initial policy and yeah what we can see then here in the result so maybe i will get that a big bigger i guess uh, hopefully everyone can read it so um, for explanation of the graphs so in blue is the episode length here i guess uh, at 300 we have a cut down where the it's just terminating the green one is the reward of the agent and then we have here several further lines so the red one is an analytical optimal solution which height we will reach with a rocket then the orange one is the best solution when we just use random actions for the environment and here the yellow one is um, the average uh, yeah, height or reward we can reach uh, with random uh, actions of the environment and what we see here is that yeah somehow we have at least here one agent which learned not really much we had here in these two some yeah not so nice behavior in the beginning but at least they were able to solve it and uh, this one looks quite good uh, yeah the reward was decreasing so, uh, and the episode length is decreasing the reward is rising and we yeah, somehow find some optimal solution so this is yeah i mean the main message here is we just have these initial random policy and yeah sometimes it can happen that we don't find an optimal solution in the first try but maybe in the second or third and uh, what can help here is really these um, parameter optimization for the learning rate and so on to find yeah uh, optimal working solution so it's also the experience during our work that we um, find a working environment and then we really have to optimize the different hyperparameters to find a configuration which has almost always a positive outcome for the after a training procedure okay so 
let's have a look here on the different agents. So optimal control has an average reward or of um, 0 0.0122. And what we see here is that here the third agent with the minus one wasn't able um, to start the rocket at all. And yeah, at least here the other agents reach yeah, some height and the first one with the 113 is probably the best of the four agents we um, learned here in this training. Okay, so um, yeah, here is also some thing what I uh, forgot to say. So we have here now two different kind of agents. One which is episode wise updated and one which is stepwise updated. So we have here also a comparison uh, about the different update of the uh, network parameters. So here in the top we had the episode wise updated agents and here in the top section is the stepwise updated ag uh, agents. And at least here I would say we can't see really a difference in the um, yeah, outcome. I mean, here it's two agent which worked not too much. Both had an agent which uh, wasn't able to launch the rocket. And yeah, here at least we had three out of four which somehow ended up nearly the optimal control result. Okay. Then, yeah, it was also a bit important to um, show how it works when we um, go into the usage of uh, such libraries. But um, yeah, during the lecture, it was more the goal to have also knowledge how to implement by yourself the algorithms. So, um, What you can see is that we really not need much code to implement it. We have in the beginning again the um, time steps here, some yeah um, callbacks about the update that we um, have the nice process bar where we are in the training process, and then it's really only um, yeah import of the import of the um, kind of agent we want to use, that we want to use it on the CPU. The batch size is here quite large in comparison to what we have implemented with only 32 um, learning rate and so on what we need. Also an important point, the learning starts here after 500 steps. So this, uh, the first 500 steps, we only apply random actions to fill our replay buffer because um, without experience in the replay buffer, we are also not able to draw the batch size of 265. So this uh, learning start has to be at least same size of the batch size. Otherwise we are not able to yeah, draw enough experience during our update step and that will end up in an error and I guess it's also in up in the handwritten code that we have such a um, yeah start part and uh, when we have a look into the result on the um, yeah agent of stable baselines we can see that it's yeah, somehow same behavior. We have here a really good agent, um, some agent which yeah he tries to find a solution and at least here we have an agent which is not able to um, run really the rocket and here this one looks also not too promising that something will happen. Yeah, then I will quickly go into this part and um, turn off the Visual Studio Code that we can have a look on this rocket launch, how it looks like. So I guess everyone can see it. This is one of the agents we trained and at least um, we see that 
the rocket is launched, it mainly uses the full fuel in the beginning and uh, we end up in a height of the environment. Okay, so that's the part to the DDPG. I will have a short look onto my notes if I set everything. So I already mentioned um, that we have now an off policy um, learning algorithm. So um, during the question of Oliver that we are able to, yeah, I guess also implement some other execution in the beginning where we can train the critic as and also the um, actor from. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess I set everything we needed for that part. If you no, have no further questions, I will continue with the PPO. So, um, now we use these um, PPPO, PPO agent, which is an on policy um, learning algorithm. Uh, what is maybe an important information we talked uh, directly before the um, exercise in the lecture about it that we have here such kind of clipping part and um, we can also learn here um, stochastic uh, actors so um, we don't get a deterministic action directly on the actor instead we have here some um, yeah, normal distribution where we have to draw from an action or um, when we want to use then a deterministic action, then we will directly use the mean of these uh, distribution of the actor. Um, maybe a, an important hint uh, why we use here these clipping part. Um, that's quite interesting if the training probably gets instable so that the network weights make too big jumps during the training. This is maybe uh, one solution you can use to yeah, limit the um, change of the network weights during the different updates. Or you can also lower the learning rate in such algorithms like the DDPG we um, talked about before. Okay. Do I have to say something? I guess um, what is now the main difference when we go into the implementation of the code is that we have here the part of the stochastic actor, um, the forward path that we have really here now a probability as an um, as uh, action and not directly or a distribution I mean and not directly a main action and as I said before is that we now want to learn on policy so we have now a rollout buffer here and what we do is that we always clear the buffer when we update our policy. So when we make a policy update, we only use experience we have made on that policy. So here the buffer gets um, yeah, resetted each policy update to um, yeah, only have the newest experiences in the um, buffer or in the um, memory where we want to use the next update step from. Okay.
do I have to say something here? So I guess here is the part of the advantage calculation, maybe a short hint what is happening here. So this is now the calculation of an upper triangular uh, matrix. And with that, um, yeah, this is the part where we yeah, now have our weight updates. And here is then also the part where we clip them to the value. Do we have more to say to that? I guess not at the moment. Also, um, only if you have some question to that, um, I guess. Yeah, I have not to say too much to it at the moment. Otherwise, it's like uh, before that we now have here um, the Adam optimizer, uh, the gradient descent optimizer to <coughs> yeah optimize the stochastic actor and the critic. Um, we have again here the loss function for the critic part and here the loss function for the actor part. Um, yeah. The learning function is here. What we didn't have in that case is that we um, do not need such target networks and then yeah, as I said, for the deterministic case, we have to use the mean of our policy pi or from of the distribution of the actor. And otherwise we can sample of that distribution one action and apply that then to our um, yeah, environment. Okay. Then we have also here such a training loop for the PPO algorithm. We can take then, uh, we can have another look into the results of that. What we see right now here is that, um, yeah, it looks in comparison to the DDPG now a bit better that we have, yeah, yeah more results. Um, coming through or the age, more agent was were able to learn something um, useful and then here is also a summary made above 50 experiments and what we see here is that we have above these 50, 50 experiments we have here in blue always the best scene reward and here in green the median reward and something really interesting is happening here that we somehow see sometimes that the agent can even beat the optimal result and here um, yeah one um, the one uh, solution or um, point which can uh, which results maybe into this behavior is that um, the optimal solution is calculated on a continuous model analytically and this is really the ground truth we should expect but now we use a discretized model and um, yeah somehow this discretization will end up in losing some informations and in our expectation we just see here then some error due to this discretization where we lose some information and um, we should not expect that we really end up in a more optimal solution than the analytical one of the real physical system to explain these outliers. So then we have also here these implementation and stable baseline. So it's really 
same part like before. We have here the um, callback customized that we have some update bar which we see here in the bottom and then it's nearly the same like before we can directly import the PPO agent, run it for four times um, and yeah. Then uh, we have also here nearly the same behavior like before that we have two agents which are great in the performance but we see here that we have also two agents which are not able to learn something and um, maybe one message which Wilhelm pointed out in the first run of these um, reinforcement learning course he said that uh, we should not always use blinded these algorithm based on these uh, libraries because we can also make by hand some um, yeah, updates to the algorithms which are beneficial or address to solve the um, problem we are trying to solve in a better fashion than these directly generated algorithms out of these um, yeah, libraries. Okay, so that's all I want to say today, I guess. So maybe um, as a last point, I guess if you, yeah, we talked today about two different algorithms, the DDPG and the PPO. I guess the main difference in between is um, the actor. So one is um, directly giving us a deterministic action, which is, yeah, I guess more the algorithm we use in our daily work for solving control tasks, because in the end it is just a deterministic problem which has to be solved. And then we shall had a look here in the second part to the PPO where I guess it's more beneficial maybe for some stochastical environments um, where we really need this distribution to work with to point out the yeah, main difference. So are there any open questions to these two parts? If it's not the case, maybe I can um, say also something to usage of code based on the um, tutorials or tutorial solutions. So it's allowed to copy code of, of the um, tutorials or exercises and use it in your solution for the exam. So if you may want to use PPO, then you are allowed to um, copy parts of the solution, which is available via um, GitHub. But um, when we ask you where you got this code from, then you have also to point out where you got it from, that it is also uh, just copied from the exercise and so on. Okay, and I guess with that, I am at the end. So I will not join next week, I would expect. So then I wish you good luck with solving the exam task. And I guess with these um, exercise, you should also have, I guess, two possible solutions which should solve the um, flappy bird environment in a quite good fashion when you find a suitable reward function. Okay, then maybe we see us at the exam and otherwise good luck.